everyone, I am back and today we have a special guest, Alton. Hello everyone. So Alton used to be the head of marketing for Nasty Gal and James Perth. So actually Alton is here to share with us some of his expertise in building online brands. And I think that's a topic of interest for a lot of people. Uh, for YouTubers, we're seeing some of the bigger YouTubers even starting to market themselves via business cards, via AdWords, and even billboards in New York. We're starting to see that they're building their own media empire. And for people who actually carry products, some of you may have an Etsy store or a Shopify store or an eBay store, you want to gain awareness online, you want to reach out to more customers, get more customers to buy your product. And we thought, who to better ask that question but Elton. I first met Elton, actually he met Elton seven years ago when he was working at James Person. He's actually one of my first clients. It's true. Yeah, actually, what it's got you? Long. Yeah, it's been that oh long. Gosh. What got you to reply to my email or did I call your, probably email. Well, well that, that's a great question because um, you know, I think it's apropos for what we're talking about today is you always as an online marketer need to be looking at new emerging channels, new placements of where people are online and where you can reach them, where you can you know, reach your community and have a conversation with them. So when I first learned about Sheetopia, I was like, wow, this is amazing place. This is a community that we want to have a conversation with. Great. So I emailed you and told you about my community and we started a conversation and it's Ah, it's been a long-term relationship. Yes, it has been a long-term relationship. <laughs> Score for us. Alton, for Marketing 101, I have, uh, let's say I have these pretty Chinese silk, um, Chinese slippers with um, pretty cherry blossoms on there and they're super soft. They're great for a household in the winter. Okay, I'm imagining it. Yes. <laughs> so, Marketing 101, I'm sitting in my room and I have a box of those and I want to get it to people who are really into comfy slippers and they really like silk products and they really like pretty girly things. So, yeah. where do I start? Well, you have to find those people. You have to understand who they are. Um, you really have to define what is a consumer for these pink slippers. Um, and really hone in on why they're going to care about your slippers as well. So I'd, I'd say that's, I mean, that, that is marketing one-on-one. Understand who you're trying to reach. Who are, your, who are your consumers? Okay. And how do I do that? Well, that's a, a good question. It's going to depend on your product, but one way that I would do it is really find out, you know, how are people going to use these slippers? Get them in the, their hands. You know, get their feedback. Give them to a wide variety of people. Uh, get their feed, you know, get the reaction to your product. See if, you know, like I know if you gave me a pair of those pink slippers, I wouldn't like them. So oh, you would really? learn right now. Well, <laughs> well, no. Doesn't go with the blue. Doesn't go with the blue. So, you know, one way that you could definitely start is getting your product out there, getting them in the hands of people and getting them to use them. Okay. Really figure out if you, if you know who your consumer is. All right. So now that I know who my consumers are, and we talked a little bit about different marketing strategies in our Periscope session or earlier, and if you guys want to see more of that, follow us on Periscope. We had a lot of loyal followers from the Periscope session that asked us a lot of questions, so I want to delve into some of these questions. So when it comes to marketing, Elton, um, we know that a lot of people pay for ads, and Google is one of the most popular channels to buy ads and AdWords. And let's say if I had you know, $5,000 to spend for my pink Chinese slippers, um, what proportion of that should I be spending on AdWords? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And you know, I have to start by saying it depends. I mean, it really depends on your company and your life cycle of your company and, and what you're selling um, and, and how expensive it is to advertise in that media. So what I would do is on, you know, if we have this pink slippers, is I would test it. You know, I'd put a budget out um, based on impressions for certain keywords, and I would see if it worked. If it worked, I would continue to spend more money. If that continued to work, I'd experiment more and more until I had a law of diminishing returns, until my spend started to not make sense. And then I would move on to another channel. Um, another way I'd look at this, though, is why start at AdWords, right? Why start there? Um, that might have been a great place to start, when there wasn't such a crowded field in the ad, you know, words ecosystem. You know, I think uh, if you tried to advertise right now on Sandal, mm -hmm. it's probably be very hard. There's gonna probably be dozens and dozens of advertisers uh, competing for that term and paying for that term. It's probably very expensive. Um, so I would even ask, 
uh, you to look at other paid media channels. Uh, and that's something we'll talk about a lot today is I'd even look at you know influencer marketing mm -hmm. and working with bloggers uh, and social media uh, partners to really get your voice out there, get awareness out there of your pink sandals. Yeah, so the, question, so the next question is, is it beneficial to buy followers on social media if you're not getting popular fast enough? Well, there's different opinions to that, but I've got a strong one, which is no. <laughs> <laughs> Why um, not? Because, you know, the whole reason for having followers on whatever platform you're on and you're in community is they're authentic. You know, they're people that really are looking for you for a trusted source of information, a product, a service, a conversation, a dialogue. Uh, they want that, that, that trust level there. And if you're just buying followers, uh, it's going to give you a false read on what your real connection is to your community. So, you know, you could pay for a million followers or even just, ten, let's say, 10,000. And then you look to have a conversation with those followers and you find that there's only five people talking to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, the term for, you know, buying followers is a vanity metric, where it doesn't really do you any good, but makes you think that you look better in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's it's very uh, false read. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I have a point to that, which is I recently uh, read this book written by my friend Ryan Holiday, who used to be head of marketing for American Apparel. It's called uh, Growth Hacker Marketing, and he actually had a point about buying followers for people that are just starting out when they have like literally three followers and they all have the same last name as them. Mm -hmm. And and he actually does recommend buying followers maybe when you're really, really small to build up a, a base sense of credibility to maybe like from five to a thousand so that when you approach people or when people find you, they don't think you just started like yesterday. Right. Um, what do you say to that? Oh, I hate to disagree, <laughs> uh, but I will. And that's why everyone has a, a point of view. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna gauge it on my experience. But I think that if you have a strong service, you have a strong product, you mm -hmm. have a strong brand, even if it's at the nascent stages, people like to support you and get behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people don't necessarily want to align with the popular. Yeah. They want to be aligned with the brand retailer that defines themselves. And in these days, it's almost better to be consider yourself unique if you're defined as someone with 10,000 followers versus 3 million, because yeah. that makes you less common and more unique. Yeah, I agree. So we all know that Instagram is this huge, massive platform that a lot of marketers are focusing right now. And what do you think is after Instagram? Well, it's kind of a trick question in a way in that I think when marketers go to a platform, it's already matured. And if there's an advertising model around it, or it's fast emerging an advertising model. So I think you know if you're following that logic, uh, it'll be a site like Snapchat, which is experimenting in, in advertising. Uh, methods within it. So what e-marketing firms have done things that you've seen that really push the envelope and that's really cool? You mean brands that are actually yeah. working? Whether it's through an agency or their own doing? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Um, there's a lot of companies out there um, and you know a few come top to mind that have been celebrated in the press are, are sites like Patagonia mm. you know who really celebrate their product, uh, their environmental message and the usage in the community of uh, Patagonia. Um, I think they do a really good job, but they also don't do a good job in certain aspects. So making this more generic, I would say that the companies that are doing a really good job in e-marketing are the ones that are really fostering that authentic, real dialogue with their consumers mm -hmm. and then highlighting it. Mm -hmm. You can have a great, you can foster community, you can have a great dialogue with your community, but if you can't highlight it in a real authentic way, then you're not really being a good email marketer or, right. or e-marketer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my opinion, um, Sperry actually has really rebranded itself really well. Um, full disclosure, they're actually one of our clients, but we don't do all the work for them. But they've really branded themselves as the brand of adventure, uh, the brand of the sea. So on their Instagram channels, you see a lot of adventure-based um, images uh, that make you think of the lifestyle, the longing of being out there outdoors. Um, so I thought that was a really great uh, message of the Odyssey. When you do have that dialogue and you do um, create that engagement and you found that you haven't sold or haven't sold as much as you like, 
how do you um, how do you measure success, and how do you learn from your success? Well, that's a great great question too because I think it's twofold, mm -hmm. right? One is uh, I think it comes with engagement first. So just because your your dialogue or your forms of communication are not ultimately going and driving conversions right away. The, the fact that you are driving the awareness and the conversation to begin with is very valuable. You can't overlook that. Um, you can't be so myopic to say, well, what sales did it generate, right? Um, so that's one aspect that you really gotta look at. And the other is, um, you know, you wanna look at how they're engaging with your brand and then coming to ultimately convert, but you know, there's ways that you can look at attribution. So, um, if you're looking, if you're looking to really drive community and awareness, an attribution is a great metric to use. Use a use a 30-day window mm -hmm. for that channel and see what kind of new visitors are coming from that channel. Look at their engagement. Look at their conversion. And most importantly, I think it's overlooked. It's not just conversion. Look at how many of them are new. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a, that's a missing piece that a lot of online marketers forget to ask: is how many new customers is this channel converting? Right. So in the field of social media influencer marketing, what are some of the tools that would help marketers um, create efficiency with their jobs? Yeah, you know, there are some and a lot of times they really rely on the actual platform. So mm -hmm. there's Iconogram for Instagram per se. Um, but I think if you look at the whole field of influencer marketing, you know, in, in, that usually utilizes a lot of the social media platforms. Um, you know, there's not many out there. In fact, it's an emerging field. And one thing that I'm really excited to learn about in the last few weeks is Sheetopia Connect. Mm -hmm. You know, um, utilizing a tool like that has been, you know, being valuable for an uh, e-marketer. One final question is, if you, given that you're someone so senior in the marketing space, um, if there are three things that someone watching this who is in the brand building or marketing strategy field should be doing today, Right after watching this video, what should she or he be doing? I love that. So first thing is, ask yourself, what is the real issue that you're trying to address as a marketer? Is your problem an awareness problem? Or is your problem getting customers to come back to you, right? And so I think that you need to answer that question. And I'm gonna take the case of awareness, right? So the second part would be, uh, if you're trying to uh, Garner awareness and you're trying to tackle that issue you need to look away from conversion right you really need to look, need to look away from ROI because you're trying to build a brands uh, through conversations through dialogues through informing people who may have never heard of your brand it's not going to convert very well right so um, you're gonna I'm going to tell you the second thing you need to be doing is looking at forms of really creating awareness, mm -hmm. not tied to immediate sales. Mm -hmm. And the third is, and these are all related, which would be how to ask yourself, what are you doing for influencer marketing? Mm -hmm. You know, how are you working with influencers and how are you taking advantage of that today? Mm -hmm. um, are you doing it well? Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're doing it well? Um, and I would say this is that I would really leave you with this, this last question is to ask, you know, are you doing influencer marketing systematically? Because every marketing discipline, whether it's search, whether it's SEO, whether it's email marketing, whether it's affiliate marketing, whether it's display advertising or programmatic advertising, whatever you're doing in the, as an e-marketer, all those channels are systematic mm -hmm. and have a real strategy to it and a real execution. And I think a lot of people in the influencer marketing haven't systemized their approach yet. Right. So there's a huge opportunity there. Okay. Those are great thoughts to leave us with. So please do tell us in the comments if you have any additional questions for me or Elton or what you like the best about our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe and comment and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.